Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Script UI scripting tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you the three different ways you can make dockable and floating scripts uh, for any of your Adobe scripts. This is going to be using three different methods that are available online and we're just going to be going over how to create them. We'll be making this very simple UI along the three different methods just so that you can see how each of them needs to be formatted in order to make them work. Before we get started, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out this code in the GitHub link. Follow us there for other updates on code. And down in the description as well, you can follow us on Instagram for other updates. If you're not a member of our Discord server, you can join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. And if you'd like to help support the YouTube channel and get cool perks at the same time, you can check out the link in the description to become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP. So the first script we're gonna be going over creating is a dockable script. This originally I learned from Video Pro Coalition uh, from David Torno and his amazing tutorial series, uh, some of which I believe have been privated on Vimeo. So if you know how to get to the link to those uh, or his unlisted Vimeo uh, for these videos, that'd be awesome. But I am making this as sort of a posterity thing in case if they're all uh, gone forever, basically. So to make a dockable script, we basically are going to have a function that generates the script itself. The formatting required is a little bit different. And if you want to just copy and paste the format, again, don't worry, there's a link in the description with all the code here. Dockable scripts are kind of the only scripts that need to be installed in a certain place to work uh, how they're supposed to. You can have a floating script run from any folder on your computer and it's going to just be a floating script. But in order to make your dockable script actually dockable, you need to put it inside of a specific folder. You need to go to your After Effects version, Support Files, Scripts, and put it inside of the script UI panels folder. You can put other scripts in here and it might cause issues, but this is primarily where you wanna put your dockable scripts. And if it doesn't appear yet in After Effects or whatever app you're using, uh, you can basically just restart the application and it will refresh all of these options. And of course, the advantage to a dockable script being that you can uh, rescale it and dock it into different areas of the interface of Adobe. And this will allow you to easily organize it if it's something or a tool you're going to be using quite a lot. So now we're gonna go over the dockable script code. First, we have it enclosed in uh, brackets, which just allows us to minimize the entire thing. And what this is gonna do uh, at the very end of all this is run my script. Now my script is a function we set and it's going to take an input of this object. Essentially what that means is just uh, take in any object and by this, it means this script that's currently running. Then inside of my script, uh, that function, we're going to build our script UI, which is basically the main function that's going to then give us all of the information and uh, allow us to create the UI. So basically we're going to run my script and then inside of my script, we're going to run my script build UI. You can just copy and paste this part as I have done for five years now. The next line is where we're actually going to define the window or panel object. And this is just using some uh, minimalistic code that makes it super uh, short. So basically what we're doing is grabbing this object and uh, checking if it's an instance of a panel. And then this object is going to equal a new window, which we're going to define with our normal uh, window properties if you've followed my tutorials. The first argument of a window is the type, which is in this most case is a palette window, uh, and then the name of the window, which we're gonna call dockable script. The, then you can put in the X and Y position and the size of your window, which I just have as undefined, so it auto-populates. And then you can have properties uh, that are extra, su such as if it's resizable, or if you want to have the close button visible. And these can just be put in within brackets here. So we're defining our panel, and we're checking if it's an instance of a panel. If it isn't, which in most cases it's not, uh, we're basically going to define a new window and set that as the values. So my panel is now equal to a window, but it is an empty window. So we need to add basically our user interface elements inside of it. In my case, I have a create composition button, uh, just a little panel box here with some text and a close button. So basically I have different groups here have three different groups and each of them contain an element. So what we do is we define our UI elements with a sort of inline JavaScript. And this is all contained within one string that is basically one line of code. Uh, and what this is, we're just gonna set a res variable equal to all of our code. And the way we format it is again, inside of a string, 
And uh, the way we make it multi-line but kind of single line is end each line of code with this comma backslash. If I remove it, it makes the string not complete. So this is how you kind of write a single line at the same time uh, having multiple visual lines of your code. A little bit complicated, but once you get the hang of how this format looks and uh, codes, it's uh, pretty easy to create. The way we kind of define our overall window group is by saying res is equal to our group, and we'll have a begin and end brackets, and we'll close that out with a semicolon and our quotes. And within this, we can basically put all of our groups, buttons, images, anything in our UI. This is our overall group basically representing our window. And because of that, we can set the orientation and other options from here. The way we do that, as you can see, we just need to inside of our brackets say orientation, colon, and then as a string, we give it column. If you're familiar with CSS, this is pretty much similar to how CSS looks, which is a little bit nice if you're a web developer. And then anytime, again, you want to go to a new line, let's say we want to have a whole bunch of space uh, to add in more stuff. You can see it's going to break our string, but we can continue the string by saying comma slash, and it will keep it. If we go down a line and start writing some more stuff, it's going to break our string, but we can stop that by saying comma slash. So in the next line, let's create a group. We can say group, and this is where we've actually defined the name of something. Our group name that we're creating is going to be group one, colon, and then we're going to define what kind of UI element it is. This is the actual built-in name according to extend script. So we're going to create a group and then same thing to define all of the stuff inside of a UI element. We need to put it within brackets. So inside of our brackets, we can set, say the orientation of our group. And I'm going to set that orientation to be a row instead of a column. So our main panel has everything going from top to bottom because it's set to be oriented as a column and our first group will be set to be a row. So we can just simply create group after group and have them stacked like that. And if you want stuff to be within your group, you need to make sure the end brackets is after those elements. So if I wanted to say add my create comp button, we can say create comp button. That's the name of our button. The type of element, it's going to be a button and we can then define any properties. So I'll say the text within my button should be create comp. Now you might think this would work, but this is actually not going to put it within our group. We need to make sure it's within uh, the, the end bracket here. So it's really important when making a dockable script to pay attention to where your begin bracket for any groups are, as well as your end bracket. So we need to remove this end bracket. And now you can see we have an open uh, bracket here. We can now just close it after our comp button. So I'll say end brackets and then do my special end line character thing. So that's the basic way you start programming a dockable script. And then you can just continue on here saying group two. What kind of element is that? It's a group. And then again, we can set the orientation or any of the properties of our elements with a string after we've defined what property we're adjusting. Again, just like CSS. And if we want to add anything to our group, again, it needs to be between the brackets. So I can create a new line here and let's add, uh, actually this should be a panel. So I can change it from a group to a panel. That way we have this outline here. And then we also have uh, some text within it. So let's create a variable called my text. What kind of uh, element is this? It's going to be some static text and the text inside of it is just, we can say test, 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 test. And now we can close out our text, close out the line, and it looks like uh, we're missing something. We need to close out this line as well. Now that's going to basically set up our UI. The biggest problem I've noticed when creating dockable scripts, at least in the beginning processes of learning it, is the formatting errors it can give you are very vague. For example, say I forgot like uh, a single quote or something like that. This right here will throw off your script completely. It won't work and it won't really tell you what the problem is. So be very meticulous when creating dockable scripts. My biggest tip is to build it little by little and make sure every couple elements you test it to make sure it appears just fine and then move on. Now, I'm obviously not programming the entire thing at once here. I was programming it bit by bit. So let's move on 
to actually the rest of the script creation. Just having our panel and the information defined in our res variable isn't enough. We're going to take our panel, the GRP, and we're going to add this res text. What this means, GRP, this is our sort of global group here. This is always going to be required when you make a dockable script. You need this sort of outer group, which represents sort of the whole group as a window. So what we're gonna do is take my panel and the group within it, which references this first element here basically. And then inside of there, we're going to set my panel and we're adding our res string. This basically just adds all of these UI elements to our panel variable we just set up. Now ignoring this stuff for just a minute, then below where we add all of these, uh, basically this string of UI elements is where you put your defaults or your methods and declarations. If you have any on-click functions or you wanna set up some basic variables and stuff, this is where you want to do it just so that you don't mess up any other code. So for example here, I reference my uh, comp button as well as my close button and run some code based on that. And the way you access elements inside of a dockable script is a bit different from a floating script. You first need to reference the panel and then go down the hierarchy of how things are contained. So instead of just having a variable or calling say create comp button, I need to call my panel grp, the group it's located in, group one, and then create comp button. And then I have an onclick function which runs some stuff. After we've done all of our onclicks, defaults, and declarations, we then set the layout to true. My panel .layout, layout is set to true. And finally, we return my panel. That is just the build UI uh, function right there. Basically, all of the build is to set up the string, set up our declarations here, and then return the panel. So if I minimize this, what are we returning the panel to? Well, inside of my script, after we've now built our UI, we're going to set my script pal or any variable equal to our UI. So we're going to say my script.build. This will basically run our build code and give us back a variable with our script in it. How are we going to show our script? We're gonna make sure that it's not null and we're gonna make sure it's a window and then we're going to center and show it. So finally, after you've set all this up correctly, you should be able to run it and now have your dockable script with everything built in. Again, making dockable scripts at first are gonna be more difficult because they are a bit more meticulous to build as you can tell, um, but they are going to offer you some more things for the users. Moving on, let's talk about floating scripts. Now I, pretty much for all UI stuff that I don't already know, I will either use the object model viewer built into extend script or I'll use this script UI guide, which literally has about everything you could ever need in terms of building a UI from beginning to end. And this is of course, mostly for dockable scripts. So this link will be in the description. It's also on the discord server. Uh, it has a full explanation of all the elements and things you can do, but creating a floating UI is much simpler. If you're familiar with the floating UI, it's just a floating UI that you can't dock anywhere and is always on top. And instead of using the sort of string creation method that we use with the dockable script, we're gonna use more traditional JavaScript code, which requires creating new objects and providing those objects with arguments. So for example here, to create a window, I just created a variable called window, arbitrary name. We're gonna create a new window object. This creates something from scratch. And this is the name of what we're creating in terms of the JavaScript object. And we're gonna again, give it a type name. This is very similar to up here where we define a new window. We're gonna give it the type of window, the name of the window, the sizing of the window, and any extra properties. Then instead of putting any properties inside of brackets here, we're simply going to grab the property with that name. So if we wanna change the windows orientation, we just say window.orientation and set it equal to whatever value it requires. Some values might require strings like this. Some might require actual numbers. For example, if you have a slider and you wanna set the value, you need to use a number instead of using like a string. And then we can just continue going down the hierarchy, defining new objects. And uh, basically the way you define objects within your window is by adding them to the window. You say window.add, of course, using a window variable, and you first give it the name of what you want to add, the sizing of what you want to add, and then the name of what the object you're adding is going to be called. In this case, I add a group, undefined size, and it's called group one which won't be actually displayed in the interface. 
Then you can go on to set the orientation or other properties just the same. You grab dot property name and set it equal to a string, an integer, or whatever value it requires. So then you just continue to go on down the hierarchy. If you want to add something to the group, you can just add it to the group. If you want to add something to the window, you simply add it to the window. Then in terms of clicking on things and initializing variables, you don't have to put this in a specific part of the code. I usually just, of course, make sure you define it after the element. I don't want to put the code for the close button, of course, before I define the close button, otherwise it will have an error. And very similar to our dockable script, we just need to say window.center and window.show to show it on our screen. So when we run it, we get a floating script uh, with all of our properties we defined and all the abilities. This type of script is much easier for beginners, and if you're really new to programming, uh, completely unfamiliar with syntax of programming, this may be the way to start because it's much more simple to get a handle of, and the hierarchy of how you add things within the window, within groups, is much more understandable. Now lastly is kind of a bonus. It's the third method, and I'm pretty sure this is a floating type script. The link for this is inside of the Adobe uh, scripting docs on page five. Uh, not the actual page five of the PDF, but page five according to the bottom here. It has a basic uh, run through of how the JavaScript works in this version of the scripting. And uh, in this case, what it likes to do is create a function to generate our UI, which I have used before and is actually sometimes very useful. If you have many windows to manage, you can simply make a function like this, one big function to contain all the code to create your type of window, and then you simply run that function to store it in a variable. And you could run this into a whole bunch of uh, different variables. Say you have my tools panel one, my tools panel two, my tools panel three and four, and you can have control of a whole bunch of different windows, have them popping up at different times, whatever is required. Maybe you have an options menu, maybe you have an about menu, and you can have these continually uh, stored and modified with the use of a function like this. So all you need to do is define a function. In this case, it's very simple. I've called it uh, create UI. And we're basically going to do the same thing as creating a floating script, but inside of this function. We're going to include the, the creation of our window inside of the function. We're going to include all of our groups and the elements within that inside of the function. And we can also include any clicks or events or declarations inside of our function that are local, uh, basically meaning they belong to that interface. And then at the end, you want to make sure you return whatever the object you defined as for your window, because uh, you basically want to be able to call the function and set it equal to a variable. So when we return my panel, which represents our entire window object here, you're going to store your window into a variable. So if I run this without showing the script, we don't have anything up here. And if I say alert my tools panel, you can see I'm going to get a window object. And from there, we can simply grab our window object called my tools panel and center it. And we can also show it. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. That's how to create dockable and floating scripts for your script UI using three different methods. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. Down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And if you'd like to use this code yourself, take a look at it, learn the ins and outs of creating dockable and floating scripts, check out the GitHub link in the description where you can also follow us for coding updates. In the description as well, you can follow us on Instagram for other updates. If you want to get more help outside these videos, you can join our Discord and get help on the scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and many other channels available. And if you want to help support the YouTube channel and get cool perks, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or a VIP link in the description. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time.